Welcome to Movie Recall. In today's video, we will be going through the 2016 movie, Me Before You. It's time to recall. Let's get started. Turn on subtitles and spoilers ahead. The movie starts and we are taken to an apartment. On the bed, a couple seems to be having a hormone sandwich. The girl's name is Alicia, who is a beautiful blonde woman. The boy's name is Will Trainer, who smiles and asks her if he should stop. Alicia mentions the time. It is 6.15. Will gets up to get ready for the office. He is now ready to leave for work. The man leaves the house on foot, emerging into teeming rain. Already on his mobile phone and talking business, he rushes across the street. The lights of a speeding motorcycle appear behind him. The scene then changes to a cafe where we see a girl named Louisa Clark, also called Lou, working as a waitress, and her dress is not cool at all. She is rather dressed like a little girl. She is endearingly sweet and chatty, trying to please everyone with her witty banter. When the last customer has left the cafe, the owner puts a closed sign on the door, tells her that he is sorry, and hands her a small brown envelope containing a month's wages, implying that she has been fired. The girl is really upset and walks home to the small terraced house where she lives with her parents, her sister Trina, Trina's young son, and her grandfather. The small kitchen is crowded. The family is depending on the income of the two girls because Father Bernard is out of work and it hits them hard that with the cafe closing down, Lou has lost her job. Her mother is positive, however, that Lou will be able to find another job. In the next scene, we go on to see her in another one of her childish outfits as she runs on a running track with a boy. The boy's name is Patrick and he is Lou's steady boyfriend of six years. The jersey he is wearing reads, Young Entrepreneur of the Year. He talks to her about getting a job and tells her that if she wants to be successful, she is going to have to keep searching. We then see her sitting at a desk in the employment agency. The kind clerk tells her that he is running out of options for her, but he consults his computer and finds a fixed-term six-month position for a caregiver and companion to a disabled man, with chores like assisting, driving, and feeding, but without requirement for special skills. He tells her that she is going to have to dress differently and advises her to take this job at any cost because it is close to her house and they are paying a really good money. Lou accepts the job right away and the next morning her mother helps her dress in what she considers smart clothes, visibly in the style of the 1980s, which she mentions served herself well in the past. They are a tight fit on Lou, but she smiles bravely and takes the bus to reach her destination. She is seen entering a castle, implying that the man she is going to serve is really rich. She is then interviewed by a woman named Camilla Trainer. The start to the interview is, of course, a disaster because as Lou sits down, her tight short skirt rips along the side of her leg. She tries to cover it with her jacket. The woman then goes on to ask Lou if she has any prior experience working with a man in this state. Lou honestly admits that she has no experience, but goes on to add that she is a quick learner and can take great care of Camilla's husband. Camilla then tells her that the patient is not her husband, it is her son who got into an accident and is now in bad condition where he cannot function on his own. Despite the fact that the interview is a disaster, Camilla still thinks that Lou is the right person for the job and tells her that she can start from today. Lou is shocked but of course delighted and accepts the offer. Camilla then takes her to introduce her to the man she is going to be taking care of. It is Will Trainer, who we saw getting into a road accident at the start of the movie. Will has long hair and an untrimmed beard. He sits in his chair upright and motionless, his lifeless arms resting on the armrests, his hand by the controls of the chair. Lou smiles broadly and says hello. Will contorts his face and makes loud, inarticulate noises. His mother reprimands him sharply. Lou is horrified. Will's face relaxes and he looks at her, introducing himself in flawless tones. There is another nurse named Nathan as well. Camilla tells Nathan to walk Lou through all the things she is supposed to do with Will. Later, Lou gets back home and tells the family that she has gotten the job. All of them are thrilled to learn this. The next morning, when she goes to work, Nathan shows her a large file containing Will's care schedule. Lou is overwhelmed by the amount of medication she will have to administer, but visibly relieved when Nathan explains that he will be doing all the heavy lifting and attend to delicate physical matters. As we see her with Will, the man is mean to her. He always seems to be giving sarcastic responses to the girl and does not listen to anything seriously. The job goes on and Lou tries her best to improve Will's behavior every day, but she has had no luck so far. One day we see her lying with her sister Trina, with whom she shares that she is sick of her job and that she is thinking about quitting. Trina, however, goes on to reveal that she is thinking about going to college to resume her studies, so she tells Lou that she is going to have to keep up doing that job. 
Lou is upset at first, but then agrees as she has no other choice and, of course, is a bit of a pushover as well. One day, Alicia, the girl who was with Will at the start of the movie, and his best friend Rupert come to see him. The meeting is not really a good one. Both visitors try to make excuses why they haven't been to see Will earlier. They then tell him that they are getting married and Will is shocked. We see Lou eavesdropping on the conversation and when Will leaves the room on his wheelchair, Alicia also comes out. She runs into Lou and tells her that she wanted to stay with Will even after he got into that accident, but she of course cannot help someone who does not want to be helped. Alicia leaves and we see Lou in the kitchen clearing away the coffee tray. She hears something clattering to the floor and the noise of glass breaking. Terrified, she follows the sound and finds Will in his bedroom, the photos from the console scattered on the floor around the wheels of his chair. Lou quickly cleans up the mess. Later we see her sitting with her boyfriend Patrick, whom she tells about the incident during the day. She says that she really feels bad for Will. He is, however, more interested in talking about the upcoming holidays. Patrick tells her the destination he has picked for their holiday. Lou is not happy at the mention of Norway, but manages to fake some enthusiasm as she does not want to upset Patrick. However, when she learns that he is going to participate in the Viking triathlon in Norway along with his mates, she expresses disappointment. Patrick sees no problem with his choice and condescendingly suggests that they can do some sightseeing after his race, and Lou agrees yet again. The next morning, Lou is at work where she is trying to fix the broken frames from yesterday and Will sees her doing this. He tells her that he does not want them fixed because he hates looking at them. He then starts being mean to her again and this time, she has had enough of it. She loses her patience for the first time and tells him off for treating her like this when all she does is trying to do her job. She makes it clear that she does not like him or particularly want to be around him but is there because this is what his mother has asked her to do and that she is staying because she badly needs the money. Will then tells her to put the photos back into the drawer and leaves, but it seems like her outburst has hit a nerve on Will. The next thing we see, he is being civil to her and invites her to watch a movie with him. She likes the movie and both of them now start getting along well. This is the first real conversation they've had and Will even tells her to take him outside, and both of them now seem to enjoy each other's company for real. Later that day, Nathan, passing Lou in the kitchen, comments that Will is in a good mood having laughed about one of Lou's naive blunders, but is quick to put her at ease that it's all good because it's the first time in a very long time that Will has laughed about anything. Lou happily smiles to herself. Later, we see them at a hospital as Will has to go through a routine checkup. Nathan sits with Lou and tells her how bad Will's condition actually is. He explains that his condition is final and he will never be able to move more than his head and a few fingers. Lou is shocked to hear this. We then see her with Patrick who takes her to the cinema. She sees a poster for a foreign film and suggests they watch it. Patrick sneers at the idea and buys tickets for the Will Ferrell film without further consulting her. The next day, it is snowing when Lou makes her way to work. Will's father Stephen emerges from the bedroom, explaining that Will has a slight chill. He mentions that his wife is away and that he has contacted Nathan. The dad leaves, telling Lou to contact him in case she needs anything. When Lou checks on Will, he asks her to write his head on the pillows. Lou nervously leans over the bed and gently slides her hands under his head and neck, following his instructions. Will's condition seems bad, but he keeps telling her that he is fine. Nathan finally shows up and as he takes one look at Will, he jumps into action, pulling back the covers and stripping Will so he can place wet towels on his chest to help reduce his temperature. Lou watches and listens to his instructions, then with horror, notices the large, recent-looking scar on the side of Will's wrist. After having tended to Will, Nathan leaves but Lou is still there, and even when it is nighttime and the working hours are over, she still sits with Will. Later we see Lou watching some videos of Will and learns that this man actually used to be very lively and had a really fun life. She is heartbroken for him. She decides that she is going to help him any way she can, but one day, she hears his own parents talking crap, implying Will is never going to be fine. This upsets Lou and she discusses it with her sister. Lou decides that she is going to make Will see that life is worth living. She decides to take him out, but his parents tell her that she can try, but they know he is not going out with them. Lou, however, lies to Will, telling him that Nathan has never seen a horse race, so Will agrees to go out with them to a horse race. They then get there and park the car in a wet field, and Will's wheelchair gets stuck in deep, soft mud almost immediately. He quietly endures the indignity of being pushed onto firmer ground by a group of passing lads whom Lou has cheerfully recruited to help them. They watch a couple of races with Lou being the only one really enjoying herself. 
Later, Lou makes an embarrassing scene when they are refused admission to a restaurant on the grounds that they have the wrong color badges. Lou ignores Will's quiet hints that he would rather not eat in public, and Nathan finally tells her that Will wants to go home, and she finally listens. Time goes by and still decides that she is not going to give up on him. She one day invites Will to go with her to a concert with music by Mozart, and he agrees. Trina helps Lou dress for the event, and she looks stunning. Even Will is stunned to see her look beautiful, and he himself wears a tuxedo as well. The night goes well, and when they are about to part ways later on, Will even asks her to spend some time with him and obliges. She one day invites him over to her place for dinner, and despite having a few awkward moments, they all seem to be enjoying until Patrick shows up. He does not seem to like Will and seems jealous of him. Will notices it and makes him even more jealous. After the dinner, Will thanks them graciously, and Lou's mother gives him an affectionate peck on the cheek. Before he leaves, Will makes a pointed remark at Patrick, who rises to the bait and answers back. Will delivers a knockout parting shock, telling him he is a lucky guy, having a girlfriend who gives a great bed bath. Patrick is dumbfounded and stares at him while Lou's father can be heard complimenting Will's wit. The next day, Will and Lou go to a ruined castle as Will wants to visit. They talk about their favorite places, and Lou suggests Will go to his favorite place in Paris, but Will says he does not want to go to that place in his current condition. Later, it is revealed that Lou's father has been given a job by Will because he does not want Lou to bear all the expenses of the family. They then go to Rupert and Alicia's wedding together and have a lot of fun. They love each other's company. Will's parents also notice the change in his behavior and are happy about it. The next day, Patrick and Lou fight about Lou putting her work for Will before their own holiday plans. They part without making up. Will and Lou then go on a vacation to Mauritius to spend the holidays there. They have a great time, and Lou expresses her feeling for Will and the two kiss. Will, however, still goes on to tell Lou he still intends to take assisted suicide, saying that he wants her to live a full, independent life instead of a half of a life with him. Heartbroken, Lou quits as Will's caregiver and refuses contact with him. Will's father visits Lou and convinces her to talk with Will, but she finds out he has already left for Switzerland. She follows him there to be with him in his final moments. Some weeks after Will's death, Lou reads a letter he left for her while sitting in his favorite cafe in Paris. In it, he says he has left her enough money to follow her dreams and encourages her to live her life abundantly. And with that, the movie comes to an end. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon to get new movie recaps.